Sweet Cactus. This fruit is usually eaten in jams, preserves, in juices. It is also used to prepare smoothies, sorbets, and gelatins. But we should keep in mind that being the fruit from a cactus, it needs to be handled with special care. When it is harvested, the small thorns that cover it can make harvesting this fruit a nightmarish task. Removing its thorns from the skin can take a long time and a long process. Be careful with the wind when you're in a prickly pear plantation. The thorns are carried by the wind and they can get stuck in your body if you're very close. The prickly pear can't be handled without gloves, right? It has a lot of thorns. Yes, lots of thorns. Truthfully, I don't know how they managed to harvest the prickly pear without using gloves. You don't use gloves, you must be used to it. They have been working here for 25 or 30 years, so now the thorn does nothing to the body. I've done this for a long time, and if I try to pick one with my bare hands, I can't. I can pick two or three figs at most. Here's how to pick the prickly pear, two or three figs, but my hands get full of thorns. Look here, I already have thorns in my fingers. Don Manuel, this pear, after going in the basket, we take it to a washing station. We place it under a stream of water to wash away the fluff. Yes, you turn them when they're a little wet. A little wet, it makes it easier to handle. It's that it flies off. The fluff flies off and it does not let you sleep when it hits you. It doesn't let me sleep and I have to go and bathe. You have to go and bathe. Let's say this fluff feels almost like cowage. Yes, just like the cowage. You know, the cowage plant. Yeah, the cowage, of course. I had to work at a cowage plantation once. So if you get in the middle of these plants, they have this itchy fuzz that clings to your body. So prickly pear farming is not for everybody. No, only those in the know. And you can only find these people in the villages of the Alto de Sabana, in Hidalgo, in Brazil, in Robial, in Aguadita, in Limón, in Loma, and in Boquerón, in Guayabal River. The culture is very small. That's because there are still many people who believe that the prickly pear fruit is just for birds. There are people who still believe this, that it's only good for this. But really, the prickly pear has many health benefits. For example, for constipation, for good digestion, for the colon, and many people sometimes don't know this. Originally from Mexico, the opuntia plant is known as the prickly pear, or nopal. This shrub is remarkable for its longevity and its ability to produce large quantities of fruit throughout its life. Its fruits are sweet, edible, and highly prized for its high antioxidant and vitamin content. The entire plant is rich in soluble fiber, which helps to regulate the intestinal tract, fight constipation, and lower cholesterol. Which village are we in, in the town of Sonson? We are in Hidalgo. We are in Hidalgo, in the village of Alto de Sabanas. Yes, in the village of Alto de Sabanas. How long have you been farming the prickly pear here in this village? This shrub, which I planted, is 40 years old. Those over there, just below the area I will show you later, those are around 55 or 60 years old. 55 and 60. I understand that in other villages in Brazil, we have plantations that have been going on for more than 80, 100 years. Yes, this cutting came from there. Some part of this cultivar came from over there. Tell me, why is the prickly pear cultivated in this part of the Alto de Sabana and not elsewhere in Sonson, nor in other cold parts? Why is that? I don't know. From here, they've taken cuttings elsewhere, to those parts where you see the greenhouses, but they haven't thrived. They waste fertilizer on them, and I don't know why. Sure, according to a study, it is the quality of the soil. According to this study, it says that warm winds come to these parts to the Arma River Canyon that come from the Cauca River, from La Pintada, 
when they crash here against this mountainside in the Alto de Sabana, they create a very special microclimate for the prickly pear. The prickly pear is a cactus plant that is from the desert. That is, it needs very dry air. This dry air only occurs in these seven villages of the Alto de Sabana. You cannot grow this just anywhere. So in Colombia, the only commercial crops are in Sonson. There are close to 93 hectares, and we have more than 300 families who live from the prickly pear. More. Much more? More than 300. More than 300 families. And they all deal with Chilindrino. He's the one who buys figs. He's the main buyer. He even joined the cooperative. Did he absorb the cooperative? He is the strongest buyer. So there are more than 300 families. So if on a given market day he buys 200 or 300 tons, and I don't know what he does with it. I don't know what they do. Because he has three trucks. One leaves on Tuesday. Very good. Another goes on Thursday, and the other one leaves on Saturday. Sure, so that means 20-ton semi-trucks. Sure, very interesting. That's a lot of prickly pear. On these plantations, at this moment, our suppliers number approximately 230, 240 people. And obviously, each person represents a family. We've been doing this for more than 40 years. The business began with my grandparents, and from there, my parents continued it. And here we are now. The family is still at it. The prickly pear is an exotic and prodigious fruit largely unknown in Colombia. It is prized in other countries like Chile, Mexico, and in some parts of Europe. The region where this fruit is grown is located in the town of Sonson in the province of Antioquia. Villages like Brazil, Hidalgo, Aguadita, and the Alto de Sabanas are dedicated to cultivating it, combining its production with livestock production. This area of the country also offers its residents and visitors a natural landscape with lush views and a warm, sweet, mild climate. The prickly pear plant can be cultivated in a wide range of soils, provided that there is enough depth and nutrients. This shrub will grow without problems. Although it is easily propagated from seed, even from seeds extracted from the dried fruit, it is common to find this plant propagates easily thanks to its adventitious root system, which allows it to grow roots not only in the embryo, but also any other part of the plant, such as in its leaves, underground stems, or in old root stubs. Don Manuel, tell us how the prickly pear crop is planted. You bring it with a spade here and flatten it very flat. Then you place three leaves like this. Good. Do you understand me? Sure. Crossed? Yes, crossed like it is here in my hand. One here, another goes there, and another goes here. And you cover it? No, don't cover it. Don't cover it. You wedge it. Wedge it. So you only put the soil underneath? I don't have a machete here. I would lay out a leaf for you right now. You flatten it and here and below the one that stays elevated, you put a little dirt. Do you understand? Sure. Yes, so it stays well wedged so that it sits comfortably. If you put dirt on top of it, the plant dies. Yes, very important. If I cover it with dirt, so long plant, do it like this in a cross. In a cross. What do we apply to the soil? Nothing to the soil, just water a few days later. Do you use fertilizer? What kind of fertilizer? Not this fertilizer. Organic? Yes, the one we use for coffee. Yes, the fertilizer used for coffee. The prickly pear. It is granulated. It's fertilizer that is sold for coffee or for potatoes or the like. Does it respond well to the application of phosphorus and nitrogen? What I know is that we're going to have to constantly spray what we're planting now. Why? Do we have problems with red spider mites? Yes, with Titan in a little bath. That's very important, Don Manuel. Tell us something. The leaves have perforations. We see them here. This is caused by canker lesions due to the high humidity. And for this, we apply the fungicide Mansate and Titan. Ready? 
That helps to stop canker. But, Don Manuel, we see that there are some leaves that are interlaced with the web. What kind of problem does this represent? You have to try and kill the spider. Does it hurt it? I kill it. Yes, it hurts the plant. How is prickly pear harvested? Tell us how you harvest the prickly pear, knowing that the shrubs are closing in a lot, knowing that it has a lot of leaves, thorns, and some needles that hurt. What do you do about it? We plant in long rows, five or eight yards long. Look at those rows over there in the hill. Look at those planted there. Those eight yards were planted by the serna, and look, those plants are almost on top of each other. Do you have to cut stalks over the course of time to create open space? No. No need to cut. We don't cut the paths. Sure, when it closes in a lot like this here, where it is very closed, it must be cut to find the bulb. Not before. Not before. Not before. Later then, you cut the one that is going to grow a prickly pear. Clearly, we cannot stop production of this stalk. Maybe, sometimes, a little stalk will get in the way, and you cut it off. An average of 2,325 tons of prickly pear are produced annually by farmers from the town of Sonson. In the town of Sonson, we have around seven villages dedicated to farming prickly pear. At the moment, we have 93 hectares of commercial prickly pear, which employ about 300 families. All of this is in the villages of Alto de Sabanas, which is approximately 14 kilometers from the town center. In a part where we have a warm thermal floor with an area of dry tropical forest, thanks to this condition, the prickly pear has found an adequate habitat for itself in this region. In terms of Colombia, Sonson is the only town that farms prickly pears. We have a production of approximately 2,300 tons produced in 93 hectares, with an average of 25 tons per hectare per year. These pads are sold as vegetables that can be cooked in broths, soups, salads, casseroles, entrees, sauces, drinks, desserts, jams. There is an endless variety of preparations that can be made with this wonderful plant. Our market is basically in Bogotá. All of the market is basically in Bogotá. We have done this for approximately 35 or 40 years as a family business. It's been in the family from our grandparents and on down. All of us here work with prickly pear and the market always has been Bogotá. Look, we pick the prickly pears from the plant and we bring them here and we put them to soak. Next, we grab them and take out the thorns. For this, we remove the bud. This outer bud also is removed with a knife and we keep on washing it like this. We clean the prickly pears until we take out the fuzz. Look. This is already washed, look. That's why we use gloves, to pick them. Down there, there are more people who pick them and wash them without gloves, but I always work with gloves. First, we peeled them with a spoon, and after years, the idea came to use this sack. We used to clean them with a spoon, or we use the edges of a small can. We crafted small knives, and we scraped and scraped like this. The prickly pear is really good, very tasty. You can make a milkshake with it. Drink a prickly pear milkshake, and you won't get hungry. It's very nutritious, this juice. Have you tried some prickly pear juice? No. No? 
If you'd like, I'll make you some prickly pear juice. The prickly pears from Sonson has specific markets, mainly Bogotá. People from Sonson opened the market in Bogotá about 50 years ago. About 80% of the prickly pears produced in Sonson go to Bogotá. Initially, the commercialization of prickly pears was geared towards producing feed for the birds of wealthy Colombian families. And later, when the community knew the benefits of prickly pears, they began to consume it fresh. Today, Bogotá is the first consumer of prickly pears, followed by Medellín and then by Cali. At the municipal level, we consume the fresh fruit, but in small quantities. The prickly pear has a lot of benefits. It is rich in minerals. It is a fresh fruit that also improves the digestive tract. Let's say that due to its freshness, there are many people who eat prickly pears to improve their digestive tract. The prickly pear, the plant of life. The prickly pear cactus is one of the most important national symbols of Mexico. It is found on the coat of arms of this nation, holding up an eagle that devours a snake that is rooted in a small rocky island in the middle of a body of water. In Mexican mythology, this plant is thought to be the tree of life, thanks to the fact that apparently it never dies. And even when it is dried out, it can produce new fruits. In the stores, they place it alongside other vegetables. In the part where you find aloe, the whole aloe leaf, that's where they place the product. It has health benefits. We are selling it with the following motto, nopal, which is the original name of the leaf, the tree of life. The prickly pear does not require much water to live. Deserts and cold regions are particularly kind to this plant and its development. That's why it has become a very good source of income for the families that choose to cultivate it. Hear the bird. Manolo, have you not fed the tolche bird? Ah, ese, ese le queda más bonito como flor, ve tan pinchada. ¿Ah? The flower of the prickly pear is a hermaphrodite flower, which means that it has both sexes. It is automatically pollinated from the moment the plant flowers or blooms until the moment that the pear grows out. Commercially, this period lasts six months. The plant is harvested two times per year. Here in Sonson, we harvest in December, in the months of November, December, and January is the main harvest, as well as a short season in June and July. Its vigorous and extensive surface roots give it the appearance of strength, but it is fragile in a loose and smooth manner. These stems also have a large capacity to store water, as they have abundant parenchyma, this ground tissue allows it to store large amounts of water, making it easy for this plant to withstand long periods of drought. This edible cactus only has feminine flowers at its receptacles. Each flower is composed of an ovary, a long stylus, and either a whole or divided stigma. Let's say that at this moment, we have no study that specifies that the plant is pollinated by insects or how to cross the fruits. Because even though the literature speaks about four varieties, in this town, we only have this variety. The pollination that happens here occurs between the same variety. There is no cross-pollination with other varieties in the environment. Mexico profits from this plant and its fruits. They consume its edible pads in various traditional dishes, and they use it as a remedy for multiple diseases, such as irritation of the liver, inflamed colon, ulcers, etc.
It is very tasty. In addition to the properties of this fruit, the cactus plays an important ecological role. It stops the degradation of deforested soils, meaning it changes unproductive dirt into productive soils. The issue of the prickly pear is an important issue for people. Besides this, consumption of the stalk is now growing. The stalk is where the pear is born out of the cactus. A lot of people know it as just a cactus. We're working with it because of the amount of healthy uses for the control of diabetes, of cholesterol, to lose weight. It's being used for that. So we also are trying to break into this part of the market, the cactus stock or nopal market. Besides its fruits and its high nutritional value, there are other characteristics that are practically unknown even in the countries that grow this plant and by its consumers. For example, its roots are used by artisans of the town of Sonson to make beautiful artwork. Without a doubt, the possibility of taking advantage of this species should be highly attractive to the industrial agricultural sector, since all industry seeks to obtain the maximum benefit from raw materials. It is a very good way to improve the economic conditions of its cultivators, and also by utilizing all parts of the plant. We avoid the disposal of debris that can contaminate the environment sometimes causing damage to the crop and surrounding environments. <laughs>